All right, I want to go to work on the foundation, the basics. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Begin at verse 1. Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 1. Acts chapter 2 and at the very first verse. Listen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, brothers and sisters, Pentecost did not originate in the New Testament. Pentecost was and is the celebration of the Jewish people. How God delivered them from the land of Egypt. And Pentecost is a great feast. Yeah. A large dinner. Big meal. I want to certify this as I go along in the book of Tibet. In the book of Tibet, chapter 1. I will start reading at verse 1. Come on, son. The book of the words of Tibet, son of Tobiah, the son of Aniel, the son of Eduel. Yes. The son of Gabiel, of the seed of Esiel, of the tribe of Nethali, uh -huh. who in the time of Enesimer, king of the Syrians, was led captive out of Thesbe, which is at the right hand of that city. In the book of Tibet, chapter 1. Rather, in the book of Tibet, chapter 2. All right. And we'll start reading at verse 1. Move quick. Now, when I was come home again. When I came home again. And my wife Anna was restored unto me. Yes. With my son Tobias in the feast of Pentecost. In the feast of Pentecost. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. There was a good dinner there prepared. There was a good me. dinner prepared me. Prepared me. In the which I sat down to eat. So that's what Pentecost was. It was a feast commemorating God goodness in behalf of Israel. Pentecost was not the beginning of a Pentecostal church. No. Get this. Get this. I want to rub your nose in scripture. Pentecost was not the beginning of a Pentecostal church. That's right. Pentecost have to do with eating. Which is the holy feast. Eating. That's right. Eating. That's right. A feast. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Now on the day of Pentecost, meaning during the feast of the seven weeks, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. During the time of Pentecost that was being held, the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem. And when the day of Pentecost... The second chapter of Acts was not where a Pentecostal church started. That's right. I, 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 I have to put the wood in order. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Or it take God in the days of Elijah when they offered up sacrifice. Elijah come along and put the wood in order. And I want to put everything back in order because historical literature yeah. have contaminated what is called church. That's right. And people are prone to believe historical literature That's right. more than biblical facts. That's right. Pentecost mean eat, eat. food, mm. feast. feast. On the day of the feast. That's right. On the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost. Was fully come. What do you mean fully come? That means the feast was in full bloom. That's right. There was already indulging in it. That's right. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. Wait a minute. They wasn't in one accord <clears throat> on a spiritual perspective. There was a one accord eating. Right and commemorating what God done. That's right. It was God that chose to interrupt the feast. That's right. That's what we need. That's right. A interruption in our feast. Yeah. Viewers, this program is designed 
to interrupt your religion, interrupt your church, and more importantly, interrupt what you believe. That's right. We want to challenge what you believe by encouraging you to come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Let us forget about how long we've been in any organization. Viewers, can I get you to do that? Forget about the organization you were raised in. Lose sight on a position that you have. Forget about who ordained you. Forget about what you were ordained. That's right. Never mind that your mama go there. Who cares that your daddy go there? Amen. Let's come back to the Bible that was here before your mama and before your daddy. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All religions that profess the name Jesus, Jesus, Isa, or Yahashua Hamashiach, whatever language you want to say it in, yeah. let's come back to Bible and see is our belief system is according to the Bible and is our preaching is in keeping with the Bible and do all of our faith come from the Bible. Amen. I believe that's a good setup. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say? Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. What is it? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, let us remember, it was Jews gathering there from every nation. That's right. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. They was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly. Suddenly, there was no announcement. Suddenly. There was no warning. No. They was enjoying their Pentecostal gathering. That's right commemorating what Jehovah done for them. That's right. Suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Suddenly. Suddenly. Glory to God. Amen. Before then, there was all in the upper room continuing in prayer with supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. These all continued. And with the brethren. That's right. But then, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly a Suddenly, sound from heaven come from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind the bible didn't say it was wind as of a rushing mighty wind the bible compared the sound to the sound of a rushing mighty wind mighty wind the reason why i want to explain this because preachers are telling the people if you don't hear a wind before you speak in tongue, Lord. you don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have to hear a wind. No. no. You don't have to hear no wind. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. There came a sound. Sound. And the writer, by God's permission, is comparing the sound to wind. That's right. There came a sound from heaven as. As of a rushing mighty wind. As. A as. comparison. Mm -hmm. As a rushing mighty wind and. And it filled all the house where Holy. they were sitting. Let's go back to the wind. Back to the wind. Which shows you the move of the Holy Ghost. That's right. It came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Mighty wind. Rushing and mighty lets you know the impact of that was not soft. That's right. That means the Holy Ghost came with a force. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. If naturally you are on the receiving end of winds of a cyclone. The cyclone don't look at what you're wearing. No. Or 
how you feel at that time. That's right. Or how cute or handsome you think you are. That's right. But what the wind does is rearrange your appearance when you are in the wind and it takes you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Glory to God. If you're in the wind of a cyclone or a hurricane, the force is so strong, you got to hold on to something so the wind don't take you over. That's right. I'm saying that to say this. There was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. So therefore the noise that was made by the Holy Ghost was strong and loud and it was heard and felt. That's right. So this cute sheep Holy Ghost. Go ahead. That many folks have Go ahead. is not the sound of God. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost takes you out of your comfort zone. That's right. It changed your look. It changed your appearance. It might mess up what you wear. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you viewers call the Holy Ghost a phenomenon. Yeah. As they say, God don't act like that. Yeah. You forgot it is written in the book of Isaiah that the ways of the Lord, of the Lord strange. is strange. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you that says the Holy Ghost don't exist or speaking in tongues don't exist. And many of you write me and ask the question, do all speak in tongues? Let's read that. Yes. And then we'll go back to the book of Acts. In the Everybody book of 1 right? Corinthians. Listen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're at verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're starting in verse 28. Begin at verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles. God has set some in the church, first apostles. Secondarily prophets. Prophets. Thirdly teachers. Yes. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing. Yes. Helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Mm -hmm. Are all apostles? No. An Are, apostle is God called, God sent, God anointed, God instructed, God made. That's right. Somebody wrote me and said, well, what is the need for apostles today? And what is the need for prophets today? For prophets Hold today. that. Give me figures 411 so I can answer that real quick. Benefit. And then let's shift gears and go back to the book of Corinthians. I want to show you what is the need for the apostles today and what is the need for the prophets today. In Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 11. Says what? And he gave some apostles. He gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. And some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. And teachers. For. What is the need? For the perfecting of the saints. Listen, there's not a child of God that can be perfected or be complete without these officers. That's right. For the perfecting of the saints means for the completion of the church. For the work. For the work. Of the ministry. Of the ministry. For the edifying. For the edifying. Of the body of Christ. And if it took all those positions to edify the church in the past, and there's only one church, and we're in that same church, same it church. takes the same thing now. That's right. So if you say there are no apostles and no prophets, then you might as well kick evangelists out. That's right. You might as well kick pastors out. That's right. You might as well kick elders out. And you might as well throw away the whole church. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Go back to the book of Corinthians, son. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 29. All right. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? All are not apostles. Apostles. All are not prophets. Are all teachers? Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? Are all workers of miracles? No. That's another thing. 
Mm. I want to elaborate on. Yeah. Somebody told me, well, if you're an apostle, all of them work miracles. That's a, lie. That's a lie. There's only three apostles in the Bible that work miracles. You didn't know that? That's right. Here, 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 here the old man. Yeah. I said there's only three apostles in the Bible that you read work miracles. That's right. First one, Jesus. Jesus. Next one, Peter. Peter. Next one, Paul. Oh. You don't read where none of the others worked one miracle, yet they had the power to do it, but you don't see where God used them to get it done. That's right. You didn't see that, did you? Amen. The Bible acts. Are all workers of miracles. You don't read where Barnabas did one. You don't read where Matthias did one. You don't read where none of them did one other than Paul. When Doc, when uh, Utosha fell asleep yeah. while Paul was preaching, Paul was preaching, he came on out and embraced him. That's right. And he came on back to life. That's right. When Dorcas died and the apostle prayed, she come on back. You never saw where all of them work miracles. That's why this is written. Are all workers of miracles? Are all workers of miracles? Of miracles. Yet they have the power and the authority, but you don't read but only three. Peter and John. Jesus, Peter, and John. Paul. Are you listening? That's right. Listen. Have all the gifts of healing. Have all the gifts of healing. No. Amen. All don't have the gift of healing. Amen. You can't heal nobody. In fact, nobody is a healer but God. But God. I can pray for you, but it takes God to heal you. That's right. I'm praying, asking God to do it. That's right. I can't make God do it. Yeah. The reason why I say that, because many of you preachers have said you can harry God. And the scripture you quote to justify your madness is when the prophet said, make haste, haste o, Lord. o Lord. He asked God to hurry up, That's but right. he did not hurry God up. That's right. Ain't nobody can hurry God up. No. You have to ask him. That's right. Put the word in order. It, that's right. Come on. Have all the gifts of healing. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongue? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read that again. Do all speak with tongue? No. Amen. Read that again. Do all speak with tongues? No. Let me show you speaking in tongue for. Now. 16th chapter book of Mark. Now in the book of St. Mark chapter 16, we're at verse 17. Says what? And these signs. These signs. Shall follow them that shall believe. Shall follow them. That believe. That believe. In my name. In my name. Shall they cast out devils. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak. They shall speak what? With new tongues. Wait a minute. Who's speaking in tongues before? The, these signs shall follow them that believe. Who's speaking in tongues before? These signs shall follow them that believe. That's why I said no, because if you're not a believer, you're not going to speak. That's right. That's right. Eh? You're not a believer, you're not going to speak. That's right. Only a believer get on their knees and tarry for it. That's right. So when That's the right. Bible says do all speak in tongues, speak no, tongues. only believers pursue it. That's right. So you that say, I don't do it, okay, I'm fine with that. Fine with if that. you don't believe in it, you're not going to seek it. That's no right. No one seek for something they don't believe in. Right. Glory to take God for everywhere the apostles went, Amen. the Holy Ghost fell. That's right. Why? They preached among believers. believers. While Peter yet spake the word, the Holy, Ghost fell. the Holy Ghost fell. That's right. Upon all of them that heard the, the word. word. Even them that came with Peter, those that believed were astonished mm -hmm. that came with Peter because on the Gentiles was pulled out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know it? Because they heard them speak in tongues and magnified God. That's right. Now, speaking in tongues. You better go back to Acts and read that then I shift gears yes. to the book of Corinthians. Yes. And let's atomize tongues. Back in Acts chapter 2, we're starting at verse 1. Listen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. At they, the time of the feast, when it came in the fullness, there was one accord in one place, and suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I let you know God is a very strong force. That's right. As a rushing mighty wind, and it. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. If you truly have the Holy Ghost, it fills all of self. All the house. The reason why all of self 
need the Holy Ghost yeah. because all of self is wicked. That's right. And it needs the Holy Ghost to discipline, tame, govern, set in place the whole self, yeah. even down to your fingers. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost says, touch not. Touch not. You need the Holy Ghost to govern your feet because a good man's steps is ordered by the Lord. That's right. If not, your feet will be quick to run into mischief. Amen. Amen. It takes the Holy Ghost to govern your eyes in order for you to have a single eye. That's right. Holy Ghost got to govern your thoughts until it said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. So all the elements of self must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then once the Holy Ghost come in you, you must strive to submit to him yeah. that is in you. That's right. Listen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Hold it. What kind of tongue? Cloven tongues. Let's define cloven. 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 Sometime a child is born with a cloven foot. Yes. One foot is straight mm -hmm. and the other foot is somewhat bent. Yeah. Like a cloven foot. So what the doctors may do is put a brace. Yeah. It, it's a foot that's not yet straight. straight. That's right. And when the foot is not straight, it affects the momentum of the body. That's right. So sometimes it may hobble. Yeah, that's right. It ain't straight. Yeah. So in some cases, surgery can correct the cloven foot. So the cloven foot is as straight as the other foot. That's right. Many of us don't have the Holy Ghost yet. yet. We have got as far as the cloven tongue. Cloven tongues. The cloven tongue is equal to a stammering lip. For with stammering lips. With stammering lips and other tongues shall I speak to unto people. my people. So a stammering lip and the cloven tongue is the tongue that has not yet uttered another tongue. That's right. Tongues, tongues, other tongues, other tongues, new tongue, yeah. unknown, tongue. unknown tongue, same thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why they have different titles. That's right. New tongue. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that tongue will be new to you because you never spoke it before. Yeah. Other tongue, that tongue will be in another language that you never spoke before. That's right. Unknown tongue. You won't know what language you're speaking unless God give you or someone else the ability to interpret. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. I want to rid us of the myth of these speaking in tongue teaching where preachers teach, you start it off. You speak it first. Yeah. Then the Lord come in and pick it up and carry the rest. That's right. From start to finish, it's supposed to be Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2. And at verse 4. Says what? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what? And began to speak with other tongues. How? As the Spirit. How? As the Spirit. Who made them do it? As the Spirit. Who's responsible? The Spirit. No, when they saw Bishop coming. The Spirit. When Bishop came in the church. The Spirit. When the choir got started. The Spirit. Amen. As the Spirit. As the Spirit give what? Gave them utterance. So, as who do it? As the Spirit. Who do it? Spirit. John 4, 24, I want to establish who the Spirit is. God is a Spirit. The Bible said in John 4, 24, God is, is a, a spirit. spirit. So it says, as the Spirit give utterance mean as God oh. speaketh. That's right. Now, for years, churches have taught that speaking in tongue is the language of heaven. 
Yeah. For years, churches have taught when you speak in tongue, you speak in the language of angels. That's right. That's and right. when you speak in tongue, you're speaking God's language. God's language. As if God is confined to one language. That's right. That's right. Let us define this speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The works of it, the function of it, the mystery of it, the wonderfulness of it comes from heaven. That's right. But the language is a language that exists on earth. Acts chapter 2, we start at verse 5. Let me say it again. Glory to God, glory to God. You thought that you spoke in a language that angels speak? Yeah. The Bible never said that angels have the Holy Ghost. No. The Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, in tongues is a language that already exists on the earth. That's right. Someone said if it's already on earth, then that means I'm born with the Holy Ghost. No, it don't. No. Let me itemize this in such detail so the logical thinker can stop thinking. Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 5. There's a scripture in the book of Acts that folks overlook, and that was the full story of when the Holy full. Ghost fell. That's right. The That's full story. That's right. Listen! Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 5. What is it? And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. First of all, look who's there. Jews. Jews. Devout men. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Out of every heaven. nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad. When this was noise, meaning when it was heard. The multitude. When, when, the, when, when, when they heard all this noise, noise. of tongues mm -hmm. being spoken. Yeah. Uh -huh. The multitude came together. The people came together. And were confounded. They were confounded. Because that every man. Every man. Heard them speak. Them that received the Holy Ghost. Them that was looking on. That's right. Heard them speak how? In his own language. How did that language come? In his own language. What? And they were all amazed and marveled. Amen. They heard him speak how? In his own language. That mean this. That's something, brother. It is something. It's something. If God filled one with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in a language yeah. that God created. Yes. But he created that language that somewhere is an everyday language. That's right. The mystery is you don't know the language. That's right. That's why it's unknown to you. Unknown, that's right. The mystery is, you don't know what you're saying. That's right. That's why it's new to you. That's the right. The mystery is, you speak in English, and God got you speaking a language somewhere else. That's right. You don't even know what country it resides. Go ahead. All you know, God got you doing it. That's right. The Bible never taught that it is the language of God no. or the language of angels. Because that every man heard them speak. Most churches did not read no more than the four verses, four verses. or the second chapter of Acts. That's it. When they spoke in tongue. That's right. But we're going to keep reading. That's right. Listen. Now when this was noised abroad, Blessed the multitude came be together. be the name of God. Amen. When this was noise abroad, the multitude came together. The multitude came together. And were confounded. And they were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. And they were all amazed they all and was marveled, amazed and were surprised. Saying one to another. All right, listen at the give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, now we're at verse 7. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, we're at the seventh verse. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, and we're at verse 7. Now the public is looking at these folks speaking in tongue. That's right. And the public was all amazed. And marveled. And they were surprised. Saying one to what, another. What did they say to each other, Williams? Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? All these that speak are Galileans? And how hear we every man? How do we hear 
hear every man. These are the lookarons commenting. That's right. How now the lookarons did not have the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's why they was amazed. Amazed. Because these people was that was there, they wasn't enough their ethnic group. No. They didn't even speak their language. Yeah. So all that was there looking on were amazed. And marveled. I'm, I'm shocked. Saying one to another. They saying one to another. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They Galileans. And how hear we every man? How do, well, how do we hear these people, every man that's speaking now? In our own tongue, wherein we were born. Wait a minute. Amen. They spoke how? How hear we every man in our own tongue? And where was the origin of the tongues of the lookarons? Wherein we were born. We were born. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Listen! And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? What else? Parthians. Parthians. And Medes. Medes. And Edomites. Edomites. And the dwellers, dwellers of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. And in Judea. And in Judea. And Cappadocia. Cappadocia. In Pontus. Pontus. And Asia. Asia. For, for Gria. For Gria. And Pamphylia. And what? In Egypt. And Egypt. And in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. This where all these people came from. And strangers of Rome. And there were strangers of Rome. Jews. Mean there were strange Italians there. That's right. Jews. And proselytes. Proselytes. Cretes. Cretes. And Arabians. Cretes. They came from Greece. That's right. Arabians, they was from Arabs. We do hear them speak. Wait a minute. Amen. Amen. We do hear them speak. In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. In our tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In our tongues. Our tongues. Our tongues. And because we know Hallelujah. they don't know our language, what do we call it? This, the, this, this is, is the, the wonderful, wonderful works of God. Works of God. Of God. Amen. <laughs> wonderful works. Yeah. They're not from our location. That's right. What do you mean? That's right. God can make a minister Preach in English. That's right. And take the ear of a foreigner who speaks no English. That's right. And the foreigner can hear the whole message. That's right. In his language. His language. Amen. When you speak in another tongue, it's another tongue. That's why it's the wonderful work of wonderful God. Works of God. Because you're not from that nation. You never learned it. That's why you need a divine interpreter That's right. to bring the mystery right. of the other tongue. That's right. The Bible ain't never said Amen. it's the language of the angels. No. Or it's the language of God. We do hear them speak in our tongues. Our tongues. Where? The, in our tongue. Where? In our tongue. What else? The wonderful works of God. Wonderful works. So God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you speak in Arabic. That's right. Fill you with the Holy Ghost, and all of a sudden, you speak in Portuguese. Portuguese. See, that's the act of heaven. That's right. And that's where it makes it wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Why? I'm not an Arab. That's right. I'm not Portuguese. That's right. And yet God got me talking in a language That's where right. I'm not from. Amen. What am I saying? What am I saying? It's unknown to me. That's right. So therefore, if it's unknown, God edify me. That's right. But if God want everybody to know it, then God will make me or someone else to interpret so the church can get the message. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Uh, I, I want you to get this knowledge. Amen. This doesn't mean you born with the Holy Ghost. No. This doesn't mean because you're able to speak several languages, languages. that means you have the Holy Ghost. No. Why, Pastor Jennings? Because if you speak several different languages mm -hmm. on your own, then that's not the wonderful works of God. No. 
the wonderful works of God is when God can make you speak in a language and no one taught you. That's right. Someone said, well, why would you call it the Holy Ghost? Because God is making you speak in the language that he created. He created. There is no. Let, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Give me the book of Psalms. Amen. Let, let me back up what I just said. There is no speech. Yes. No language. No language. I want to give Bible for this. In the book of Hallelujah Psalms. Hallelujah. Chapter 19. God. Are you listening, church? Amen. Psalms 19, we'll start at verse 1. Psalm 19. At verse, at verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the, the firmament, firmament showeth his, show his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There Call chapter and verse now. Psalms 19, and we're at verse 3. David says what? There is no speech. There is no speech. No language. No language. Where their voice is where not heard. Where their voice is not heard. When the apostles was here, there was no language barrier that they ran upon. That's right. That's right. That's right. No language barrier. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wonderful works of God. God. That's right. Hallelujah. Our Arab man received the Holy Ghost. Amen. And speaking with a French tongue. Come on. Amen. A mute person who can't speak no language. No language. And his mouth come open speaking Korean. That's right. And yet he don't have a tongue to place English. That's right. It's the wonderful, wonderful works, works of, God. of God. Which mean you're speaking this by God's permission. That's why it says as the spirit, spirit give utterance. utterance which means you're not speaking this on your own that's right as the spirit give utterance. gives utterance. utterance now there's a word that's attached to tongues called diverus glory to god the bible talk about diverus Tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and first, at verse 10. 1 Corinthians 12 and at verse 10. And 10. To another the working of miracles. To another a working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another discerning of spirits. To another divers kinds of tongues. That means God can fill someone with the Holy Ghost and yet they don't speak in one language. That's right. They speak Dimes. in different languages. That's right. By the Spirit. That's right. He can start speaking Arabic by the Spirit. All of a sudden, before you know it, he's speaking Korean by the Spirit. That's before right. you know it, he's speaking in the Philippine tongue by the Spirit. Divers. And yet, he is of none of those nationalities. That's right. Divers. What are you witnessing? The wonderful work of, of God. Wonderful. Blessed be. Hallelujah. Oh, this, this is so beautiful. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Ah, this is so beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. What is it? We, back in first, uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 11. Acts 2, 11. We do hear them speak in our tongues. We hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. The wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed. They was all shocked. And were in doubt. They were in doubt. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? If those people speaking in tongue was of the nationalities that was watching, you ain't shocked when you talk English to somebody. No. No. If I speak English and Harrison speak English, we ain't shocked. No. But my, if, if, if Minister Her, who's Mongolian, I don't know nothing about the Mongolian language. But if the Holy Ghost come on me and may have a prophecy for me to give him, yeah. if he speaks no English yeah. and just his native tongue in Mongolian, then the prophecy that God give me for him, 
He's going to give me the tongue That's right. to relate the message to him. That's right. That he may be edified. That's right. Let me give you an example of the wonderful works of God. So God. Give me the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Give me the book of Daniel. Amen. In the days of King, I believe, Nebuchadnezzar, writing came on the wall. Nebuchadnezzar had a son named Belshazzar. Yes. And then Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. Follow me, church. In the book of Daniel, chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Yes. Belshazzar, the king, made a feast, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. All right. These was during the days of the son of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Belshazzar. All right. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. Yes. And drank wine before the thousand. Yes. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels, uh -huh. which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, uh -huh. that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Yes. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Mm -hmm. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and Come of on, stones. Son. Now at verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. In the same hour Amen. came forth fingers of a man's hand. And God mm -hmm. let his power be seen as a man's hand. That's right. Why as a man's hand? So the public can identify with it. That's they can right. identify with the hand of a man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. And wrote over against the candlestick yes. upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Yes. Then the king's countenance was changed. Oh, the king saw a part of the hand, but he ain't seen no body attached. That's right. If you saw a hand writing, your countenance will change too. Amen. Oh, yeah, you see a hand start writing somewhere, and you don't see nobody attached to it but a hand. Uh, in fact, you may not even stay around to see what's written. That's right. Listen. Then the king's countenance was changed. Then what? And his thoughts troubled him. What else? So that the joints of his loins were loose. Yeah, the joints of his loins loose me. He's shaking. Shaking. Uh -huh. And his knees smote his one knees against smote another. smote one against the other. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers. He looked at him crying out. Bring the astrologers. The Chaldeans. Get me the Chaldeans. And the soothsayers. And, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, yes. shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Listen. Then came in all the king's wise men. Then all the king's wise men. But they could not read the writing. Amen. Nobody can interpret another tongue mm -hmm. on their own. That's right. But uh, we'll get a chance to read that even the interpretation come right. by the Spirit. That's right. We, we, we'll show you that also. That's right. You got to speak in another tongue by the Spirit and then you got to interpret by the Spirit. That's right. Both got to be done by the self-same Spirit. Self -same spirit. We, we were going to read that also. Mm -hmm. All right. Then came in all the king's wise men. Yes. But they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Uh -huh. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in a menace, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, yes. came into the banquet house, and the, king, and the queen spake, uh -huh. and said, O king, live forever. O king, let me encourage you. How about, thoughts how about thee? just living forever? That's right. Don't let your thoughts trouble you. Nope. I know you see some writing, and you see a hand, and you over here shaking. Let me encourage you now. Don't, don't worry. I, 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 I know somebody that can help you out. Nor, uh -huh. let, nor let thy countenance be changed. What is it? There is a man in thy kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a man. In thy kingdom. In thy kingdom. In whom is the spirit. Wait a minute. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same one that wrote it. Yeah. Has to be in the one to interpret. That's right. Spirit wrote it. That's right. And you need someone with the spirit to interpret. That's right. The reason why all the others could not interpret 
Because the one that wrote it wasn't in them. That's right. Listen. There is a man in thy There's kingdom. There's a man in the kingdom. In whom is the spirit of the holy God. Spirit of the holy God. And in the days of in thy the father. In the days of thine father. Light. I said, what's in him? Light. That means he can see and understanding and understanding and wisdom wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him and what whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and suits all right let's get to when Daniel was reading the writing now in that Daniel chapter 5 we're down at verse 24 listen then was the part of the hand here was the part of the hand sent from him uh -huh. and this writing was written and this is the writing that was written Many, many to kill you for sin. Hold it. Remember, wise men, Chaldeans, yes. soothsayers, soothsayers, astrologers. And these fellows was educated. That's right. But there was a language up there. They ain't had no knowledge of. That's right. Absolutely none. None. When someone's speaking in tongue by the Spirit, if God didn't give you the ability to interpret, hold your peace. That's right. That's right. Shut your mouth. Amen. Because when one speaks in another tongue by the Spirit, it flows. Yeah. When one interprets that tongue by the Spirit, it flows. That's right. There is no complication on either part because it's all done by the self same Spirit. Amen. Listen. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written many, 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 many to kill your father. This is the interpretation of the thing. This is what it means. Many, many. God hath numbered thy kingdom. God hath numbered your kingdom. This, and, is, the, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and finished it. And finished to it. Kill. To kill. Thou art weighed, You're weighed in, the balance, in the balance. And art found, and you're wanted. found wanted. Perez. Perez. Thy kingdom is thy divided. Thy kingdom is divided. And given to the Medes and, and given Parsons. to the Medes and Persians. And Persians. Uh -huh. Then commanded Belshazzar. And they clothed Daniel with scarlet. Spirit was in Daniel. Spirit, that's right. It wasn't in the others. No. All right, now let's get the interpretation of the tongue and how all of this is done by the self-same spirit. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're starting at verse 1. Yes. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Yes. But rather that ye may prophesy. Now, why did the Bible say rather that ye prophesy? Mm -hmm. Because prophesying come in every body language where they can comprehend. That's right. Prophecy never come in a language to a people that they don't speak. That's right. Because that would make the prophecy in vain. Mm -hmm. All right. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. Hold it. Mm. Amen. <laughs> now. Amen. If Bishop Ferguson was French, yes, and I'm French, mm -hmm. we can converse with each other. That's right. But if the Holy Ghost come on upon me, yeah. they see if we converse with each other in our natural language, we are speaking unto men. That's right. But the moment the Holy Ghost come upon me, that's right, and make me speak a language that I know not and never spoke before, yeah. Right then, I'm not speaking unto, unto men, men, I'm speaking unto God. That's right. Because it is the Holy Ghost that's controlling my tongue. Yeah. And how be in the spirit, I speak a mystery, and it's a mystery to me, and it's a mystery to him. That's right. Listen. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Hold it. So you that say you got the Holy Ghost, why is it that many of you viewers can't feel it? until your bishop comes to church. That's right. I tell, yeah, I tell everybody, if you can't feel the presence of God until you see Pastor Jennings, you don't have no more Holy Ghost, then you can jump double dutch with an elephant's trunk. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost, Holy not Ghost. the Jennings Ghost. That's right, that's right. That's right. It's the Holy Ghost, not the minister's ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost Holy means Ghost. the function of God in men and in women. That's right. Listen. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. What? Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why? For no man understandeth him. No man understanding. And what's the reason, William? How, how be it in the spirit? 
How? In the spirit. You see how the book keep pointing to the spirit? Spirit. All this must be done by the spirit That's and right. not on your own. That's right. How be it? How be it in the spirit? What is he doing? He speaketh mysteries. A mystery is something you don't know. That's right. And the only way the mystery can be cleared up, somebody got to be able to interpret that unknown That's tongue. That's and right. And just like in the spirit, he speaks that unknown tongue. In the spirit, someone got to have the interpretation of that tongue. That's right. Uh -huh. But he that prophesies, he that prophesies, speaketh unto men. He what? Speaketh unto men. Hold it. When the Bible says he that prophesied, prophesied unto men because he's going to come direct in your language. And the reason why the prophecy is for men is for men to get right, to be warned, to make modifications, right. to make a change. Mm -hmm. Prophecy is for people. But he that prophesied, he that prophesied, speaketh unto men, speaketh unto men, to edification, to edification, and exhortation, and exhortation, and comfort, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, what? Edifies himself. See, when you're speaking in tongue and there's no interpreter, who's getting edified? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But remember, it's done by the Spirit. By the Spirit. You that got this tongue, you speak when you get ready. You wake up. Amen. How about Shatta La Satma La Tatsa Besar? How about Shatta La Satma La Basa Deba? Amen. Ah, La Bara 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 Sam. Abaga Sabaga Sasa. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Do you hear the Bible talking? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. You that are watching. If you ever go to any so-called revival, or if you're a member of a church, Amen. and your pastor, your bishop, your Jerry Curl head reverend, your apostle, your prophet, yeah. your jack leg evangelist, and your low life bishop, and your good for nothing elder. Amen. Any preacher. Any preacher. Get up at any time and say, when I count to three. Yeah. You're going to speak in tongue? Yeah. And you find the people doing it? Mm -hmm. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the moving of the spirit of Satan. That's right. Who can count down right. and make God blast off? That's right. The Holy Ghost isn't something you turn on and turn off. No. The Bible speaks plain. It's the wonderful works work of God. Of God. The wonderful works. So if it's the wonderful work of God, why do your bishop have control over your spirit? That's right. That's right. Your bishop have no business to have control over your spirit. No, no. You don't move because bishop move. That's right. Bishop shake, hey, he go that way, you go that way. He ha, you ha. Hey, ha. That's right. That's right. I want you apostolic and Pentecostal things to get this. Yeah. You revival lovers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Where rodents come in your church, yeah. posing as preachers. Yeah. Pull pit possums. Amen. Am I right? Amen. And count to three. Count to three. And everybody jump up. That's right. That's right. And then the bishop, you think this is, he got great power. Then all he said, then he said, when I count to three, all of you stop. Yeah. One, two, three, hamlet. That's right. That's right. How is it you infidels? Amen. Think the Holy Ghost is controlled right. by a man. That's right. The Holy Ghost is God. Amen. Amen. Am I right, church? Yeah. That's right.
That's right. That's right. When the apostles laid hands on folk mm -hmm. and they received the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the apostles didn't give them the Holy Ghost. No. The apostles were simply used as a channel for the Holy Ghost to work through. That's right. Holy Ghost is not man's to give. No. Holy Ghost is a gift. It's a gift. The Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. That's right. And it comes down from the Father of lights of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. Read quick, son, because my time is getting away. Everybody all right? Amen. Come on, Williams. 1 Corinthians 14 at verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. But no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Tongues. 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 Speaking an unknown tongue. 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 Another tongue means another language. That's right. That's right. And it's as the spirit give utterance. Give utterance. And if the spirit utter it, the spirit don't need no boost from you. No. He doesn't need any help from you. No. Read quick. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. Yes. An exhortation, an exhortation and, and comfort. comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Yes. But he that prophesies edifieth the church. Uh -huh. I would that ye all spake with tongues. But what? But rather that ye prophesy. All right. This the scriptures that tongue fighters use. Yeah. And they say, you see that? Paul said tongue wasn't necessary. Paul ain't never said no such thing, liar. No. I would that ye all spake with tongues. He said he preferred you all did it. But rather that ye prophesied. Hold it. Why? Because For, speaking in tongue is a message. Yeah. And prophesying is a message. Right. The yeah. difference is the understanding of the message is clearer in prophecy versus speaking in tongue. Right. The message in speaking in tongue is not clear unless there's an interpreter. That's right. Without an interpreter, the message of speaking in tongue remains a mystery. A mystery. Now do you get it? Amen. Listen. I would that ye all spake with tongues. I would that ye all spake in tongues. But rather that ye prophesied. Rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied. Than what? Than he that speaketh with tongues. All right, let me explain that. Explain that. Let me explain that. That's right. Let me explain that. Greater is he that prophesied. Because there are folks that say, well, I don't speak in tongues, so all I got to do is prophesy. I, I'm better. No, they don't mean that. No. It goes back to what I said earlier. When one speaks in tongue of the Spirit give utterance, it's a message. That's right. Without an interpreter, it remains a mystery. That's right. So the one that prophesied, that message is greater, greater. in understanding than the one that's speaking in tongue. That's right. Because prophecy always, always, yeah. if it's God will, will come yeah. in your language. That's right. Wherein speaking in tongue can come in many languages. Yeah. That's why it's the wonderful work of God and it's also a mystery. Without an interpreter, that's right. no one. No one can comprehend the message. That's right. Be quick. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. Except he does what? Except he interpret. If there's an interpreter, prophecy ceases to be greater. That's right. Now the prophecy becomes equal. What do you mean? In meaning. And an understanding. That's right. Because the message that derived from speaking in tongue when there's an interpreter, I can understand that message as the same way I can understand the message when someone prophesied because it's going to come in my language. That's right. Read quick. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues. Yes. Except he interpret, uh -huh. that the church may receive edify. Wait a minute. If there's an interpreter, what is the reason? That the church may receive edify. You that speak in tongue on your own. Amen. And it ain't from God. From God. You don't have the Holy Ghost. No. Did you hear? That's right. Just, just, just look at many of the preachers in the pulpit. When they lose their pages to their text, they go off in the tongue. Yeah. Uh, and God said, Harabashata, uh, um, I got to get a Honda. 
I done heard all type of tongues. I remember when I was a kid at a church, a man went in a tongue of a nursery rhyme. Peter Piper, pick a pecker. Peter Piper, pick a peppers. My Lord. My Lord, help him. People are forgetting what the Bible says. It's a it's language. language. Other tongues. Other tongues. Language. That's right. Other tongues. The Holy Ghost puts you in the church. That's right. By Bible one spirit. Say, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit. By I, one Holy Ghost. One spirit. You are baptized. Are we all baptized into one body? Into one body. Whether we be Jews. They don't care what nationality you are. Or Gentiles. Or Gentiles. Whether we be bond whether or, you're bond or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. Wait a minute. You got wait. God really want this in you. He say you got to drink. Drink. Drink into one spirit. Drink it. No one said, well, you mean to tell me how, what do water and spirit got in common? The Bible called it living water. Living water. Didn't it say so? That's right. First, uh, St. John chapter 4. Read quick, son. And at verse 14. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I give you. Shall never thirst. You won't get thirsty. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Shall be where? In him. It shall be where? In him. And when it's in you, how it going to act? A well of water. A what? A well of water. A what? A well of water. And how it going to act? Springing up. What? Springing up. What? Springing up. Hallelujah. 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 When a person has the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. they have to move. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Must move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the water that I shall give him. So Jesus, yeah. Hallelujah. The water God said that I give shall be in him. It's going to be in you. A well of water. It's going to be very deep. Well of water springing up, springing up into everlasting life. Spring up. Amen. Let me give you a better understanding. He that believeth on me. Yeah, let me give you a better understanding. Amen. Put water in a pot and put it on the stove. The water is still. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But the moment I turn the flame on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Hallelujah. I turn the flame on, the water bounce around. That's right. Spring it up. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. Spring it up. Amen. It's like fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet said it's like fire. Shut up. He said it shut up. Shut up in my bones. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said it shut up. Fire. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is fire. It's fire. Hallelujah. John said, one come after, after me. me. Mightier than I, we shall baptize. We're gonna baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that with, with fire. 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 Hallelujah. 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 You have to move. Hallelujah. 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 There is Hallelujah. no still Holy Ghost. That's right. There That's right. is no Holy Ghost. Without movement. That's right. Hallelujah. Eh? None. Hallelujah. 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 None. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not move as much as someone else. Hallelujah. That don't matter. Hallelujah. But you're going to move yeah. sometime. Yeah. That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost is fire. Fire. That's right. It makes God. Move in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Go ahead. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. 
That's why the pulpits are dead. Yes. No Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost. No fire. That's right. No God. No God. No anointing. Hallelujah. Holy Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. No anointing. Go ahead. Glory. Go ahead. When you have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That spirit. Hallelujah. It moves in you. Go ahead. Glory to God. He shall Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He shall baptize you. It moves in you. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Go ahead, man. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Go ahead. It's called a rushing mighty wind. Rushing mighty wind. Living water. That's right. And it's called fire. Fire. All three things move. That's right. Wind move. Wind to push you. That's right. When wind's strong enough, you can't walk in it. That's right. It pushes you. Pushes you. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. You understand? Go ahead. Jeremiah compared the Holy Ghost to new wine. New wine. He said, I'm like a man that wine have overcome. overcome. And when a man is overtaken in wine, That's right. he's drunk. That's right. He lose all control of self. That's right. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. Amen. You lose control of self. That's right. You're not proper. Amen. You're not cute. Go ahead. You're not handsome. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. All right. Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. Go ahead. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not proper in the eyes of people. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost, go ahead. When they received the Holy Ghost, go ahead. Oh. Those that was watching, that's right. It is written, they were amazed. They were amazed and marveled. That's the way God does. That's right. Here you have a gangbanger, cussing, shooting, yeah. serve time for murder, yeah. hardcore, yeah. tough. Yes. All of a sudden, he's in church, tattoos everywhere. Something hit him. Masculinity. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You are under the control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of the Holy Ghost. They were all filled. They was what? They were all filled with the Everybody Holy Ghost. Everybody alright? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's the name of God. Are you listening? When I say it takes away your masculinity, mm. there ain't no tough Holy Ghost. That's right. Just the Holy Ghost. Mm. Acts 2 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the name of God. Hallelujah. 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent. The whole world Hallelujah. must repent. Must repent. Must repent. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Repent. That's it. The whole world Hallelujah. must repent. repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Go ahead. All right. Thank God the whole world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Must repent. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. For the remission. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you Ghost. shall receive. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you. Anybody? Hallelujah. Want to obey the word of God and be baptized Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet if you want it. Stand on your feet if you want it. Stand on, Hallelujah. Stand on your feet if you want it. Hallelujah. 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 All of you that are standing, all of you that are standing, you that are standing, go to the back. You that are standing, go right to the back. <laughs> That's in the name of God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a mighty God. mighty God. We have the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Because it was given from a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 